unshakable confidence in your day trading. And the the whole premise of this is tr kind of a, it's all about reframing and refocusing what it is that you think you're trying to do and how you're going to get there. We've used this particular event. We do it a couple of times a year. And I would say this event more than any uh, really resonates with people that are struggling to learn how to become a successful day trader, um, learning how to overcome some of the major hurdles that are holding you back. So let's just go ahead and get started. I'm going to try to make this uh, about 40 minutes or so. Uh, used to do them in an hour, but we're going to start shortening them a good bit uh, and let you get on with your day. So um, when I was a, uh, a day trader and I was struggling, I, I was a day trader for about seven years before I saw any type of success. And in my experience with day trading, I pretty much looked like this guy most of the time. I was an absolute emotional wreck um, because of my focus on day trading. Um, you know, we've all been through this, right? Where you where you get into a trade and you know you're supposed to follow a particular set of rules, whatever whatever trading system, uh, they all have particular rules that you're supposed to follow. And uh, and in order to follow those rules, you feel like, well, I'm going to I'm going to for sure be profitable if I follow those rules. But what happens? is your mind starts to take over. And if the trade starts to get a little bit of a head, you start getting excited and happy. And you go, oh, look, I've made money. Look how much money I've made. But then it starts going the other way. And, it's dro and it drops below your entry price. And you're thinking, oh, you know what? I was thinking I should have just jumped out, taken my profits. I would have made X number of dollars. Now I'm way behind. Now what do I do? Well, I have to stay in this, but I don't know when I should get out. And then the price drops even more. And you're now, now you're not sure. You know what the rules are. But you're watching the numbers on your on your dome or on your chart trader and on your account. You're, you're watching the numbers dropping, right? And you say, well, I'm supposed to stay in this. But what am I missing? When should I get out? Should I just cut my losses? Or should I stay with it like I'm supposed to? But here's the, the real problem. And this is, this is what I realized is my biggest problem in trading. That it didn't seem to matter what I do. It's going to be a losing trade. Doesn't matter. Stay in, get out, doesn't matter. I'm going to lose. Okay? So I had set myself up to have these expectations of being a losing trader that day and every day. And I had allowed this to change my focus or to shift my focus. We do this when we sit down to start trading. We listen to a lot of things. We listen to out, uh, input from many different sources. We, we, we find distractions to fill the time where we're supposed to be focusing and concentrating. These, there are things that make it confusing for us, like paying attention to several different things at the same time or trying to accomplish many different things, but at the same time, I remember I used to... Um, uh, because I was so all over the board, I knew about or learned about many different trading systems. I was never good at any of them. But it seemed like from one trade to the next, I would trade, I would change trading systems. Or in the middle of a trade, I would change. 
um, or I would create rules or new rules or, and get rid of rules and everything. I was just constantly confused because I was allowing all kinds of focus killers. Okay, focus killers. What are focus killers? How many of you like to go to day trading forums and ask questions and read the answers uh, from all of the what you think are successful traders? Well, they wouldn't be posting on a forum if they weren't successful, right? They wouldn't be saying how good they are if they really weren't, right? Here's a little tidbit. Successful traders don't have time to be on trading forums. Yet, I always thought these guys were so much smarter than me. I need to do everything they're saying I should be doing. Or getting on Facebook or, or Twitter in the groups. I just, I just joined a couple of Facebook groups not that long ago on day traders. And I finally had to get out of it. Those people are crazy. They don't have the first idea what they're doing. Yet they present themselves as successful professionals. Um, how about YouTube? You know, you see ads like this on, or, or thumbnails like this on YouTube. Well, that's pretty compelling. I want to make $1,600 profit. And look how young he is. If he can do it, I can do it. Okay? Focus killers. You know, this picture is something I just found. But that looks a lot like my office used to look when I couldn't trade my way out of a paper bag. Now, my friends and my kids' friends would come over and see this. This looked, this looked a lot like my office. And they would see this and think, wow, he's really smart. He knows what he's doing. Funny thing is, is I was sitting in front of this mess one day and look, sat back and after having just gotten my teeth kicked in, sat back and looked at all of this and, and I suddenly thought, you know, with all of this, I have no more confidence entering a trade now than I did the first day I started seven years ago. That epiphany started changing things for me. Of course, the, uh, the focus killers, everybody's got to have uh, CNBC on uh, during their trading, right, to keep you motivated, keep you informed, make sure you make right good decisions, keep you entertained. Okay, all of these are focus killers. They're distracting you from doing what you should be doing. And what you should be doing is your job, right? As a day trader, if you want to be a successful day trader, you got to do your job. So we all do this. We all know that we have all these emotions. We know that we're losing our focus from time to time. So we decide, got to have more discipline. I've got to be disciplined, right? Y'all just have this conversation with yourself. Why is it I cannot be more disciplined? I've heard I've got to trade like a machine. I know I'm not supposed to panic. I know I'm supposed to follow the plan. I know I'm supposed to, if the indicators say stay in the trade, I'm supposed to stay in the trade no matter how I feel about that trade, about what's happening, about how much money I've lost so far and will likely continue to lose. So we all try to do this. And if you're like me, you fail. I was totally unable to manage my emotions, completely. I might be able to do it for an hour or even a day or two. And that's pretty much it. That third person in my head kept screaming at me. 
to do things I knew I wasn't supposed to do. Okay? If you're on a diet, you know you're not supposed to eat that cupcake. You know you're not. You know it goes against everything you're trying to accomplish. How many of you are going to eat that cupcake? A lot of you. So, fear, panic, and all kinds of emotions kept me from being successful. So one day, shortly after, I sat back and I looked at all those monitors and all of this information I had gathered and collected over the seven years. And because I have been doing it for seven years, I thought to myself, you know, I can usually, for a few seconds, I can usually tell what price is going to do based on whatever indicator I was looking at or whatever. I, I felt pretty confident that I could say, okay, I know now that we've hit this line of support, it's hit it twice. I know there's pretty good chance that support's going to hold and price is going to react to that support at least a little bit. But that's, you know, and, and I saw it happen all the time. And you've probably done this too. You're sitting and you're watching. You've been watching for a long time. You've got a lot of experience um, studying the markets. And you've got a pretty good feel for it. So I started thinking, what if... I could be guaranteed two winning ticks per day. Guaranteed. Now, I know there's no guarantees, but this is a game I'm playing with myself. This was kind of what started me thinking outside the box. Two ticks a day. That's it. Just win two ticks a day. What would be my income limiting factors? And I figured out pretty much only the size of my trading account and how many days I could trade. So this idea started kind of cultivating around in my head. And I start thinking, huh, you know, there's actually more to it than two ticks a day. My experience with trading was negative for seven years. But I thought, you know, there's got to be something else. You know, your initial reaction, I know you're sitting there and you're going, what good is just two ticks a day, right? Two ticks a day, that's stupid. Why would anybody do that? You know, Buy you a cup of coffee or, you know, a happy meal or big meal, whatever they call those. Maybe a beer. You know what? Two ticks a day, winning two ticks a day gets you on a regular basis. Unshakable confidence. Now. If you're thinking, okay, well, only two ticks, I'm not going to make any money. You're probably right. Not Two ticks may not be worth it, but that's where you start. In our trade room, and a lot of people have taken our two tick challenge that I'm going to tell you about here in a minute. In our trade room, we have a target of five ticks on a trade. That's it. Five ticks. Sometimes we're in and out of a trade before we even know what happened. So if you look at this, these are all five ticks. This is a chart on, on what you could make on a five tick winning trade. And this is after all the fees. Okay. So if we look at an instrument and we look at five, you know, three, four, five, six, seven lots, then, you know, that's, that's not bad. Can you make a living at that? Some can. But it's an excellent place to start building this level of unshakable confidence. 
So here's the two ticket day challenge. This is what has changed a lot of traders' lives is taking this challenge. And I've been doing this for a long time. And I get a lot of emails that we have a lot of our trade room members tell me that this was an actual turning point for them. The two ticket day challenge. Okay, let's let's do this. First of all, you got to have a simple trading system. Extremely simple trading system. You're going to take the very basics of that trading system. You don't need a complicated system. You don't need all of those monitors. I trade with now two monitors and I have charts on one monitor and my trading domes on another monitor. That's it. I have one chart for each instrument I trade. So there's six instruments. One chart for each. Don't need lots of different time frames. Don't need lots of different indicators. Don't need other tools. Okay, so it's a very simple system. So if you don't have a simple system, take a look at ours. Now, the goal for the day only is to win net two ticks. And when I say net two ticks, I mean if you lose your first trade and you lost a couple ticks, then the next time you got to win four ticks or throughout the day. All you want to do is be ahead two ticks okay, during whatever your typical trading session is. Shouldn't be too hard, right? Two ticks. Most of the time, a lot of us can get ahead during the first part of their trading session. And at the end of the session, we've lost all that we were ahead and then some. So let's look at two ticks. After you won those two ticks, okay, after, after let's just say it's 10 bucks. You made 10 bucks. You're going to quit trading with real money. And then you're going to complete the session trading and sim trading only. So what this does is in your mind, and this is why I say there's so much more to two ticks than the 10 bucks. In your mind, you know you finished your trading day as a winning trader. Okay? Doesn't matter if you lost every other trade that day when you're trading in sim. You ended the day as a winning trader and for the next nine days you want to see if you could do it again okay so the goal is to end the day as a winning trader 10 days in a row okay you're going to have some setbacks there will be some days you don't win two ticks and then you start over but eventually, you will hit that goal. After you've done that, increase it to three ticks. See, this is how we get to five in the trade room now. Slowly. Steadily. Gaining experience with a simple trading system. Okay? Now, you want to repeat that goal for ten days in a row of the three ticks. Or... What you want to do is see how many days in a month. If you want that to be your goal instead of days in a row, maybe you'll you'll say I want you know 17 days uh, of the 20 day 22 day month or whatever. You know, set that as a goal. And eventually, you're going to work up to multiple contracts per trade. Okay. So people go, Tony, how can you make money on five ticks? Well, you don't. But I do when I have multiple contracts traded on that trade. Yeah, your commissions are higher. Your likelihood of winning is also a lot higher. Okay? So what have you done? What what is this what what does this create? You've earned confidence. 
Here's the thing about confidence. So many of us want to buy confidence from somebody else. You're out there buying uh, indicators, uh, cruising um, the uh, other trading rooms and forums and YouTube, and you want to hear something that gives you confidence. Because that's the fastest way, right? But the only way to get confidence is to earn confidence. So now you understand why we take this two tick challenge. We're going to increase your confidence until when you sit down to trade each day, you're pretty sure you're going to end the day as a winning trader. Nothing's guaranteed. But your confidence level is pretty much through the roof. And you're going to earn that confidence. All right. So what is a super simple day trading system? What does it look like? Well, I'll show you ours for those of you that are unfamiliar. And I'll show you real quick how I came up with this. So when I was looking for something super simple to trade, and I knew I was going to try this two-tick thing. Well, I wanted to find something that seemed really simple. So I started looking at a chart, any chart. could look like this. And I noticed on the chart that there are turning points where for no particular reason that I could see, price just stopped and changed directions. So I started thinking, well, what, what about each of these conditions or each of these circumstances is the same? So I start comparing them. What are the conditions inside of those bars just before price turned. So I start comparing those conditions. Make sense? So what I came up with was a way to read what's going on inside each bar. And when I get a confluence of those conditions, I'm going to print that condition, not somewhere you know down below the chart or off to the side or on another chart three monitors over I'm gonna print all that information exactly where my eyeballs are looking so for example this right here is called a rock star trade setup and at the open of this bar I put on a short I traded I, I shorted this trade okay simple 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 There's another setup. This one's called a naked rock star. Whoops. Oh, well, that's, let me back up to that one. This one, I'm reading all of the conditions inside of this bar. And I'm factoring in these bars back here because I want to have strong momentum. And all of this confluence of conditions tells me there's a high probability price is going to pull back here at least somewhat before it decides what it's going to do next. What it does next, I don't know. I don't care. This is my sweet spot. This is where I trade. This is where you'll get your two ticks or three ticks or five ticks right here. So what does that look like? in real time of course you know static charts are very compelling so we've got this is what we're looking for let me stop this real quick so we've got this channeling area where price typically starts to channel and i'm going to show you in a few minutes why this is happening this channeling you know we look at it and we think well nothing's going on price is boring Traders are bored. Everybody went home. I'm all alone here. I'm just watching price going sideways. Trading sucks. 
<laughs> which is pretty much pretty much what we're thinking. But suddenly something happens and price breaks out of this channel. This is when my antenna goes up. This is when I start paying attention. Not to jump into this breakout. This is the first step for me to understand what's likely to come next. Okay. I'm watching this breakout. This is our momentum indicator. And as it gets lighter as we drop, where you can see that we're gaining more momentum and the lighter the bar gets, the more likely exhaustion is going to set in. Let's see if I can move this along. All right, now, bar's gotten much lighter. We're oversold, which is this uh, bluish color. Oversold means what? Price is getting weaker, right? We're oversold. Momentum is getting stronger, but price is getting weaker because we're in an oversold condition. I usually have a fast forward on this, but it doesn't seem to work too well on this. We're going to continue. Now, we have a speed tick. This speed tick showed up. What does this mean? This means price is weak, got started getting weaker here. And all of a sudden, we have this burst of orders being processed through the exchange. Well, if momentum, if it's getting tired and we're getting oversold, why in the world would sudden burst of orders start coming in? Okay. This means that this bar... Based on the traders that have been trading, this bar has a high probability of being manipulated. It's being manipulated by the big boys, you know, the HFTs, the people that have all the money, the people that manipulate the markets to create a reaction that they can take advantage of. I'll show you more of that in a minute. So we've got the strong momentum. We've got the big boys manipulating the orders going through. We've got major support down here. Now we have a pullback alert. This pullback alert tells us there's a churning activity going on inside the bar. Okay? And the buyers are just sitting there waiting. Now, this is where the magic happens. On the open of this bar, and you see, you see how these indicators print, right? They print in real time, right where your eyeballs are looking. There's nothing else to look at to make a decision. On the open of this bar, or better yet, if you got in late, if you missed it, you could actually enter here, which would be a better fill than here if you're going to put on a buy order. So what we're doing is we're looking for this breakout. Price pushes hard. It gets exhausted. Yet, even though price is becoming exhausted, we get this sudden hard push. Notice how much bigger this candle is than these others. We see that the buyers are down here waiting. And now when this bar opens, we have a divergent condition or multiple divergent conditions. And if you don't know what divergence is, it simply means that even though price is moving this way, momentum has already shifted directions. Okay? And when that happens, price will almost always follow momentum. Okay? So I'm throwing a lot at you here, but it's an incredibly simple trading system. Because all you have to do is qualify it step by step by step. Okay. Did this happen? Yes. Did this happen? Yes. Did th these conditions happen? Yes. Did I get a rock star? Yes. Boom. I'm in the trade. Okay. And remember what I said. This is all I care about right here. What happens after this? Don't care. 
I mean, it could go on and on and on and on and on. And I don't care. I got my five ticks. And I got out and put that money in the bank. And I won that trade. Okay? And that's all there is to our very simple trading system. That's it. Anybody can do it. So to do this, to this is an ideal uh, system to test out and to take the two tick a day challenge. Okay. Now, why is this so easy? Why does this work so well? And always will. So I got a question for you, and you don't need to type it in. Just try to answer this in your in your head. What makes prices change? What is it that's causing prices to change? I'm not talking about the sudden bursts where you where price just jumps 10, 20, 30 ticks in a in a bar. Okay, we all know what that is. Right? That's that's price being manipulated by somebody who's got more money than we do. So is it those people? Are they the only ones that make price change? The big money, the HFTs, the, the hedge funds, the quants, the guys wearing the suits, the talking heads on television? Or is it fundamentals about how well companies are doing? Or is it indicators that when price hits a certain indicator, it's going to change? Or is it rhythmical cycles that happens over and over and over again? Is that what makes price change? Or seasonal changes. You know, if you've been trading for a while, you know, summer uh, can be slower. Is that what makes price change? What about analysis? You know, the, these, these guys that get paid to be really smart and they come up with these reports about companies or industries. Is it analyst reports that cause price to change? And Eric, no, not big money effects. They do not cause all, uh, they can cause it on a short term. They do not cause it to move on a daily basis. You know what makes the markets move? Three simple things. Three things makes price move in the markets. Thoughts, feelings, and emotions about the value of whatever it is you're trading at that current price. You're going to put on a buy order. If you feel like that item is undervalued, you're going to put on a sell order if you feel like price is going to go down because it's overvalued. That's what makes price move. Thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Now, If this is the market, these are all the people you're trading against. And you had to make a decision collectively of what this group of people collectively are going to do next. How many different combinations of those three things, thoughts, feelings, and emotions, could there be in a crowd like this? How many potential combinations of all the thoughts, all the feelings, and all the emotions? Millions or billions. So if you're trying to make a decision about what a group is going to do collectively, this group, this group of people that are making price move up and down, how hard is it 
to quantify millions or billions of combinations of thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Pretty hard, right? Is there any wonder why you struggle at trading? So what about this? Here's another group of people. Smaller group only to illustrate the point. But look at this group of people. How many combinations of thoughts, feelings, and emotions? Probably not very many. Right? Right at that instant, they, they're, they're afraid of getting hurt and they want to protect themselves. Now, if you look at a group like this, how likely are you to be able to tell what's going to happen next? I can tell. I know exactly what happened. I've never seen a video. I've only seen this picture. I know exactly what happened. Once the danger had passed, they put their hands down. Just knowing that gives me an edge. If I bet you a dollar, I know what these people did after this. And you said, no, you don't know. And I said, put their hands down. Sure enough, that's what they did. Okay? So this is, this is uh, Richard. I've, I've been told it's Wyckoff. I've been told it's Wyckoff. I'll get it wrong every time. And somebody will correct me every time. But this is Richard Wyckoff. And he's a very famous trader from the early 20th century. Um, he also published uh, a trading uh, or magazine about Wall Street. Uh, very famous trader. And it, he boiled it down to something very simple. And this is exactly what we're doing. We study the responses of the technical position of the market. So I'm watching when, and waiting for people's hands to go up. I'm not trying to figure out all of the potential thoughts, feelings, and emotions. What I'm doing is just going to anticipate what a crowd will do immediately after a sudden and unexpected event. Okay, and the the reason it always will is because unfortunately we're humans, and we continue to react the same way every time to danger. And if we sense danger, we're going to try to protect ourselves. So what does that look like? So we're looking at a chart, and we see things in this chart that maybe you don't see yet. But to us that trade in the trade room, it's very obvious now because we know. We're looking at really strong momentum. Price is just really climbing fast. Then there's that big bar. Price was getting tired, and suddenly there's this burst of energy. On the open of the next bar, we see all this exhaustion and divergence. There's the clue. There's where we know, right here, we know that this is going to happen. Okay, they got caught off guard. So that's what we see every time. So let's take a look at this with and, and without indicators. Okay. I'll see if I can move this along a little faster. So this is just a chart. You might be watching a, a trading chart and uh, without any indicators on it, and you might see something like this. 
and you'll just sit there, which is what I would have done for so long. But let's look at the same thing now, and let's see what it looks like with indicators on it, if I can get there. Price is pushing up, got this big bar. Price is being manipulated. This is a climax bar. Sellers are sitting up here waiting. We got our divergence. We put on our order here or better yet, I'm always looking for a better fill. So if you can get this or even this and you could short it up here, so much the better. And that's all we're looking for. Super, super simple trading system. Now, all of these manipulations are not done just to mess with your head. There's a lot of ways that these, these guys manipulate the markets. And they don't even need to change them that much because they really only have to fight against each other to take our money. We will always react the same way. Okay? The big money is just going to roll us over if you react to what they do. Okay? We don't react to what they do. We react to what other traders do after the big money's done with them, okay? So here's what's going on in a nutshell. You uh, you look at any chart and you're gonna see patterns that look like this, okay? So we have these areas of accumulation where the big boys are buying up at a very low price all of these assets at the lowest prices. And they're going to do it very quietly because if you see a lot of buying going on, uh, you are going to jump in on that and you're not going to give them the opportunity to buy up as much because everybody jumps in and tries to do what the big boys are doing. You've seen these guys um, in old pictures reading ticker tapes. Well, that's why they read ticker tapes is so they can say, okay, well, so-and-so is buying this, so I need to buy that too because they're always making a lot of money. All right, so they're going to do this very quietly. This is going to be our nap time, right? We're all just waiting for something to happen. Then suddenly, there's a markup period. So what happens is, is they clamp down. No more buying. That price, that, I mean, uh, uh, they have all these assets and then they just don't sell any. And that makes price go up, right? Because the asset is not as uh, available, right? That's how, that's supply and demand. Then they do it again. Then they clamp down on it. Price goes up. Then they do it again. Okay. So a lot of times we're sitting there and we're wondering, you know, why is price just channeling? Everybody went home. There's nothing going on. Fact of the matter is the big boys, the guys that manipulate these markets, are in the middle of their manipulation, and this is where they make their money. I think it's so funny to hear people say that they do it, they they uh, they will whip out and stop hunt us. They don't give two craps about our stops because they've already made their money. This is where they made their money during distribution. They bought it all down here and down here. They pushed the price up to here and they've distributed and made their money. Now, that doesn't mean they sold everything because if they sold everything they had, they wouldn't have the ability to finish the manipulation. And that's what happens here. This is when they stop selling. Price gets driven up. The people in the stands with the baseball bat flying at their heads start buying a whole bunch because there's none available. 
and prices going up, 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 and they don't want to miss the opportunity, so they start buying more and more and more. And then these guys go, oh, wait, I do have some for sale. In fact, I have a lot. And they dump it all on the markets. Well, what happens with when supply suddenly overwhelms demand? What happens? Price drops. And guess what? They can do it again. And they'll do it either direction. It's not, not just a an up thing. If they'll do it up and down, they don't care. So if you haven't if you don't know about this and you haven't heard about this, just go pull up a trading chart, not a, a time based chart. These these other charts that some people like to use, I don't Rinkos and range bars and all that. I don't I don't understand removing time so you can have a pretty chart. Time is an essential factor in trading. And if you remove it, you're just removing valuable information. So go look at a time chart, a time-based chart, and you will see these patterns. All right, so, oh, I didn't click to show you all of the, the graphics here. But that's what I was talking about during that, that whole thing, all right? So we create these sudden and or they create these sudden and unexpected events that other traders could be you fall for every time. It's a given. So we can look at some more of this low stress trading that we do in our trade room, and, and it's really low stress. In fact, we call it waiting on the bus. We don't talk about what I think is going to happen. We don't, uh, uh, we don't do any market analysis. We don't do any guessing or crystal balling or talk about fundamentals or talk about all the stuff the talking heads are talking about. We don't do any of that. You know what we do? We put as much effort into trading as you would put into going and waiting for a bus doesn't really take much effort. You just wait for the bus to show up. Okay, and I've sped this up a lot. I will pause it. So here's a trade setup we call the naked speed tick. Okay, and it's called a naked speed tick because there's no divergence on this bar. But the point of any, look at all the information. Look at this. Look how flat this is. Look, nothing is going on. And then all of a sudden something is going on. We have a confluence, and I'm not going to talk. I will talk about these indicators on Saturday, okay, this Saturday, and, I'll sh and we'll tell you more about that in a minute. This Saturday, we're going to do a training session, and I will talk about all these indicators and all this confluence of information that tells us that there's a strong probability price is going to do that, and that's all we care about. This is from our trade room trades, okay? These are trades from last week, okay? This is just, I just went back and looked at them um, and re-ran them. See? Strong push. Our, um, our CVI indicator or our climactic volume. Pullback alert. A ricochet, speed tick, divergence, which is our rock star. Boom. That's it. That's all we're waiting for. And I can promise you that if you come and uh, uh, hang out with us in the trade room for a few days, this is all you'll see. You won't suddenly see, oh, wait, I didn't hear about that in the webinar. Or, the, or, or that trade he just took doesn't look anything like the webinar. This is exactly what we do all day, every day. Also, if you want to hear my commentary, Connor, um, can you put the, I don't have the YouTube uh, link on here, but we have a, a playlist on YouTube called Trade of the Day. 
And you can actually hear my commentary before, during, and after the trade. You can just go to YouTube and, uh, and do a search on, if you're watching this on a replay, uh, just do a search on um, the intentional trader and then go to the trade of the day videos. Okay. So basically you keep seeing the same thing over and over and over again, right? And those were all just trades that we took last week in our trade room, which by the way, we have a, a it's an award-winning trade room. Um, we have a lot of happy campers in there and uh, they come every day. Some have been coming for many years. Whoops. So what's next? Um, oh, there's a guy waiting on the bus. That's pretty much, that's how low, that's how stressful it is. Just waiting on the bus. So what's next? All right. So we obviously, we have a special offer. We have three different packages. So we're going to give you the opportunity to um, get involved with us, get involved with a very simple trading system. Come hang out in our trade room with us. Um, so we have three different offers. We have a smaller bundle to kind of get you started if you're not ready to get started um, and uh, invest in, in the full package. Uh, we have a kind of a middle, middle of the road package and then we have basically everything we have or will ever have, you get it for free. Okay, so we have a training program. We have a peer mentoring program where you work with, a, with another trader. Um, we have a add-on suite, um, unlimited trade room. Um, you get uh, we're there with remote support. We'll help you with installation of of all the indicators and workspaces and templates and all that stuff. You can go to this link here. Connor just put it in the chat. Uh, wait, that's not right. There's the link down here. Oh, you can barely see it. But Connor just put it in the chat there. For more details and to go ahead and, and get your investment going on uh, on these on these package and join us next week and hang out with us next week or tomorrow if you want to. The other thing, and that was supposed to come in later, uh, but the other thing we got going on is this Saturday we have a training event. And all of those setups that I just showed you on the videos, I'll go over in depth and I'll show you what the indicators do, uh, what they mean, how we use them, how we use them for setups, and what to do under different circumstances with, you know, with different conditions in the market. So you can, uh, you can just go to that. You don't even have to register. I think it's the same link. It's going to be in this same room. So I think it's the same link that you signed into this room with. But we will send you an email uh, to, that you can click on to log in. Uh, yes, Connor will be posting or be, will be emailing out the video either later today or tomorrow. All right. So a uh, little over... 40 minutes. Are there any questions? Anybody got any questions? I always feel like I hit it out of the park if there's no questions. I answered everybody's question. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. Hope we get to see you on Saturday. And then uh, maybe next week, you can come hang out with us in the trade room. Yeah, Carl, it is for Ninja Trader only. What uh, a lot of people do that don't necessarily want to buy or move over to Ninja Trader, uh, maybe they like TradeStation or, or whatever, is they use the free version of Ninja Trader. All of our stuff works on the free version of NinjaTrader also. All their charting is free, um, and you can use our, our indicators on that for this. So if you're just in love with your broker or your other platform or your whatever, 
uh, you can still certainly trade with us. All right, everybody have a great rest of your evening, and I hope to see you all really soon. Bye now.